start off this week, it was big news for you, the fully departed CNN. Yeah. Does this mean we're going to be seeing a lot more of you in the UK? Well, don't start panicking. <laughs> Not necessarily. No, a bit more, I think. Yeah, I've missed England and um, I've been able to spend most of the summer. It's been fantastic. But I, I still want to go back to America and I've got a few offers on the table to do other stuff there. But to me, the perfect combination is, is having stuff in Britain and, and stuff in America. Life Stories is among a huge number of chat shows on, on TV. What is it about the show you think that makes it stand out? Well, it's a lot longer. You know, it's one guest and it's for an hour. And I sit down with them for two to three hours in front of an audience. There's no other show like that on British television. And I do that for a reason, to try and get past the normal barriers of showbiz stars when they go on normal talk shows. They go on, there might be some jokes, a bit of banter with the host. That's it. In my case, I like to really get under the skin of the guest and see what I can get out of them. On CNN, you did a sort of ban list of guests, of mm. people, including like Madonna and... Heaven Mills. They're also banned from my stories. If Madonna arrived here naked now and begged me and offered (laughs) herself on a plate, I would literally run a mile and reinforce the ban for another 10 years. (laughs) If she's watching, you're not coming on. Stop begging me. (laughs) Hugh Grant's the same. Heather Mills, Cherie Blair. There's a few others after that. Clarkson can come back on because we've we've, um, put our feud to one side. Do you think that would be an interesting interview now? Me and Jeremy Clarkson? What do you think? Well, I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah, so do I. What about you going on Top Gear now? Well, I would, but I don't drive reasonably priced cars. So it'd have to be stars in very expensive cars as a one-off segment. Then I can drive my Aston Martin around. (laughs) I'm not getting one of these grubby little cars. (laughs) Um, now you're a free agent away from CNN. Are you you back back in having any talks with um, Simon Cowell? Uh, I have seen Simon Cowell, and we've had talks about all sorts of things. I'd love to work with Simon again. You know, yeah. I, I had a great time. I worked for him for four years on Britain's Got Talent, six years on America's Got Talent. Um, I've interviewed him for Life Stories, interviewed him at CNN. Almost everything I've ever done on television, Simon's played a part, and I'm incredibly grateful to him for, for what he's done for my career on TV. Would I want to work with him again? Absolutely, one day. You seemed quite happy to sort of play along with Twitter with rumours that you might go back to BGT. Well, we, used, we got 19 million viewers when I did it, and yeah. now I'm noticing there are about half of that, so if I was Simon, I'd be doing the maths. <laughs> Bring back the ratings booster. <laughs> <laughs> As you, obviously, you're, you've got a close association with celebrity and uh, the tabloids. What did you think to the big story this week about the, the naked pictures that got leaked? I felt very sorry for these girls, because it's not like they've posed for these pictures thinking anyone's going to see them other than the partner they're with, you know? Someone has stolen these pictures uh, from their email accounts or from their Apple iCloud, whatever it may be, and that's just common theft and it's a criminal offence. You've got to have limits. You know, it's, uh, to me, it's perfectly reasonable for Jennifer Lawrence to want to do a magazine cover, not wearing many clothes, that's stylish in a great studio, well lit, with a top photographer, and to do that to promote herself and her movies without the world then demanding the right to see any naked selfie she sends her boyfriend. To me, you've got to have boundaries and you've got to have limits and you've got to know where those limits are. Everyone knows, anyway. If you're, if you're a remotely decent human being, you know where those, those limits lie. How does it feel to be sort of have the nickname as the most hated man on Twitter? Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Well, except when you actually analyse the survey, I think they'd only analysed about 30 or 40 accounts or something. Uh, and obviously I had one of the biggest followings. You're bound to get a lot of aggro in that. But I was pleasantly surprised. It was only 8% sending me abusive tweets. I thought it was way more than that. (laughs) So I would have had a different headline if I'd been editing the mirror. It would have been 91% of all people who send Piers Morgan tweets are not abusive. That makes me look like the most popular guy on Twitter. So statistics can always be turned any way. George Clooney is going to be directing a movie about the Mm. British tabloids, and they're already taking odds on who's going to play Piers Morgan. (laughs) Um, It was Colin Firth, Hugh Bonneville, George Clooney and John Hamm. Well, Pitt would be the kind of aesthetically correct person to be playing me. (laughs) Firth is mistaken for me anyway, uh, but I suspect Clooney will want want to run at me. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I know George, and you know we've always gotten very well. And I'm sure he's thinking right now, what could be better for my career than playing Piers Morgan in a movie? <laughs>